Okay, so Kamala Harris, who has... You mean Kamala the cop? uh, Who, as we know, has always been uh, transparent and forthright and consistent with everything she's ever talked about, has decided to flip-flop yet again at a wealthy fundraiser in the Hamptons this weekend because, you know, that's where you go to meet the people. Kamala Harris told wealthy donors that she, quote, has not been comfortable uh, with Medicare for All, uh, Medicare for All proposal pushed by Bernie Sanders, which of course she co-signed, uh, one of her leading rivals in the primary. Quote, I think almost every member of the United States Senate who's running for president and many others have signed on to a variety of plans in the Senate, and I have done the same, Harris said. According to remarks provided by her campaign, quote, all of them are good ideas, which is why I support them. And I support Medicare for all. But as you may have noticed over the course of the me- of the many months, I have not been comfortable with Bernie's plan, the Medicare for all plan. So I want to read one thing again. I'm just going to kind of snip the lines together. And I support Medicare for all, a sentence later. I don't support, Med- I'm not comfortable with Medicare for all. Interesting. Uh, Two years ago, Harris was comfortable enough with uh, Sanders' bill to become the first senator to co-sponsor it. Sounds like she liked it then. And back then, she exhibited no discomfort. No one was holding her hostage. That would be the people she arrested when she was California Attorney General. Uh, that sounded weird. But she did a weird. good job, Daniel. She Come did on. a good job, a fantastic job arresting those parents and um, for their kids being truant. And laughing about smooth, and we're getting off track. Anyway, uh, Senator Harris was hearing a lot from uh, from from lots of voters, real concerns specifically about proactively abolishing private uh, private insurance, the four year transition, middle class tax hikes. So she came up with her own plan to adjust for those. Frankly, it is better than his. So she wants to, you know, in all of her wisdom take a four-year transition which is one term as a president and make it 10 years so that a second president would have to put in even if she got voted in twice which i'm sure the insurance companies love because then you just get a republican in next and they say no and then kamala said i tried i almost was like obama in fact i was better um, so what's it do? So it's over the course of a decade. It allows private insurers to offer plans through Medicare if they comply with strict, never changing, because as we know, laws never change for any reason, government rules. She also plans to um, do revenue raising without increasing middle class taxes. Um, Sanders campaign has slammed Harris's plan as a contrived half measure and one that would leave full implementation to her presidential successor. And on Monday, Sanders signaled that uh, Harris's Medicare for all slight in the Hamptons may figure into their uh, broader case against the top rival. And we're very, like I said before, we were, I was worried about the, mar- the the shouting match between uh, Kamala and Bernie Sanders because I thought she was going to be the one, they were going to be the final two. It looks closer. It'll be like Elizabeth Warren and Sanders now. Um, but Tulsi Gabbard luckily took care of that. So this is her losing all of her donor money and now flipping over to try to get more money money from money people. So he's done, they made a point that you know, she's basically talking to donors in two different ways. Guys, what do you think? Well, first, I'm not surprised by Kamala Harris backpedaling and being uh, afraid of Medicare for all. Remember, we did a small town hall. We, we did a coverage on a town hall that Kamala Harris was uh, a part of, and she said that she was for Medicare for all. And then the next day, and we all heard it, the next day, guess what? She backpedaled away. And why? Because she got a phone call from her donors. A phone call from her donors told her, please, no, do not, not please, do not support Medicare for all or we're cutting your funding. So, you know, Kamala Harris is a neoliberal centrist corporate Democrat. Um, She's going to continue the policies of, you know, centrist Democrats. She's not going to fight for Medicare for all, even though, you know, Americans are just struggling to make ends meet. And a lot of Americans don't have $1,000 in their savings account in case something bad happens where they have to go to the hospital. So every other country in the free world has affordable health care, just the United States doesn't. But we have money for the joint strike fighter, Paul. 
medical system, Medicare for all, people, centrists, establishment thinking, democratically aligned pundits will say that it is not good to have litmus tests. But Medicare for all has served as a litmus test for a lot of people for quite a long time. Uh, it's surprising that it seems that almost every candidate knows that. Every yeah. candidate is gonna come out and say they support Medicare for all, and then a day later flip flop and go back around or talk about how they support it. But what they mean by that is they support private insurance companies doing stuff for Americans, which isn't Medicare for all. Like I support Medicare for all, except none of the things that make it Medicare for all what it is, is what they're saying. So I think it's very right of the Sanders campaign to slam Kamala Harris for this being a half measure, be mostly because it is a half measure. Mm -hmm. It's worse I than a half measure. Being, I think it's being generous, honestly. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah that is uh, fair. It's generous to call it that, because it's essentially like, I'm totally for Medicare for all. If by Medicare for all, you mean complete private control of in the insurance markets, which is yeah. no change from what we have now. It actually would take away that control from Medicare itself, so it's actually even further away. It's ridiculous. And what's funny to me is the number of politicians like Kamala who will go out there and say, I support Medicare for all, but don't look too closely at what my Medicare for all policy is because it isn't Medicare for all. And then do you think Kamala Harris is going to be talking about that during the general election? Should she get the nomination? I mean, I really doubt it. You know, well, she's probably going to be more like Trump's bad. I'm yeah, I not think that's Trump. her main policy. That's, yeah, that's, 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 what, that's what everyone is saying from Joe Biden to Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, you know, saying Trump's bad. Yeah, I, we get it. We get that Trump's bad. Orange man is bad. But we there's know. a reason why we got Trump. Yeah, it's because we have a corrupt neoliberal system. Trump is not the creator of it. He inherited it, but there's a reason why he's there. And that's because Washington DC and the Republican and Democratic establishment, they feel that running centrist, neoliberal, neoconservative candidates are what Americans want. But no, guess who owns those said candidates and those elected leaders in Washington DC? Wall Street, the big banks and major corporations. They're the ones we have to say. We don't. There's a serious issue with healthcare in this country. Student debt, a crumbling infrastructure, climate change, and so much more. So just imagine if Bernie Sanders gets a nomination. He's going to be talking about those issues in the general election and can actually beat Trump. Someone like Kamala Harris or, or Cory Booker or Joe Biden or Pete Buttigieg, they don't have what it takes. And we all saw what, hap we all saw what happened the last time the Democrats ran a corporate candidate. Clinton lost, and that's it. Now, so, now, none of this BS about Russiagate. You ran a failed candidate. The DNC thought that they can get away with it. We cannot afford it. So and this is why we got to get involved in this 2020 election cycle. And look, guys, it's just not us you can listen to. You have your phones and your computer at, 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 at j just right in front of you. Just look at all these candidates' voting records and where they stand on policies. Bernie Sanders is consistent. He's been talking about Medicare for all. He's been talking about climate change. He's been talking about student debt. He's been talking about a lot of issues. And he's been consistent about it since day one. Somebody like Kamala Harris? No. Daniel, any final words? Um... It's interesting. It's like Hillary Clinton ran last time, and I feel like to a large degree we're dealing with different aspects of Clinton in this election. Kamala represents the two-faced nature of Hillary Clinton, maybe better than anyone else. She is the exemplary uh, exemplar of the concept of a public and a private position. She's the exemplar of saying, I care about kids and also saying, I'm putting kids in jail. She's the exemplar of saying, weed should be legal and the exemplar of saying weed should not be legal and I'm happy to arrest these kids for weed. She's the exemplar of saying we need criminal justice reform and the exemplar of saying Police should never have to wear body cameras. She's a walking contradiction. And this is exactly how she's being treated in this election is exactly how Hillary Clinton should have been treated in the previous election if she didn't have the connection. She didn't have all the stuff that Hillary Clinton did. This is what her campaign would have looked like. You have Joe Biden, who represents that inevitability that Hillary Clinton claimed to have in the last election, but he has really nothing else. Like I said before, the DNC can never, ever hurt an election 
more than they did in 2016. That was the peak of their power. They were under one roof. Everyone, again, Hillary Clinton controlled everything, media, money, DNC, everything. And she lost and she won by 10 points in a primary to some to someone no one had ever heard of. Kamala can't do that. She's already falling apart. Tulsi Gabbard took her out in one debate. What's Biden going to do the second that people don't see him as the exemplar of winning and everyone else that's in there? Oh, don't worry. We got a Biden story coming up. Too. Oh, yeah. It's just <laughs> Kamala. <laughs> just drop out or join someone else's campaign. You're done. Yeah. Just endorse Biden already. We know you want to. Yeah. Be his VP. We know that's what you're angling. At. Well, yeah. so here's the funny thing. Um, I just keep thinking about all of the candidates that are on those stages in the, at the Democratic debate. Of all of them... There are relatively few who are outright saying they're against Medicare for all. It's Delaney, Bennett, Biden, Biden, Biden. right? And it's it's showing itself to be such poor strategy to try to convince people that a demonstrably effective uh, policy that works everywhere else in the world where it's implemented somehow can't work here. Now but you Paul, here. You're Ameri- making, what, what's Paul but you? Americans are really stupid. Isn't that the natural implication whenever that gets right, brought so, but up? Here's, what's interesting is of the other candidates who feign support for Medicare for all, I can only think of two that seem to actually support Medicare for all, and right. that would be Bernie and Tulsi. That's it. I mean, people will say, oh, Warren supports it, and I challenge you to find on her website anywhere where she details her plan on Medicare for All because it isn't she's, there. But, but, but she Paul, a she's she a policy wonk. Yeah, Is, she, doesn't that mean hey, everything? Hey, Paul, mm-hmm. Paul, she's got a plan for her buddy. Yeah, right, her plan me? is to do nothing, apparently. Hey, 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 you get out of here. <laughs> <laughs>